Hey guys, it's Mel, and this is the Millennial by Mel podcast. So there's so much going on with the coronavirus and wanting to thank our healthcare professionals and everyone on the front line of COVID-19, especially doctors and nurses. And I thought it would be a perfect time to bring my friend Anna on, who is a nurse. Thank you, Anna, for everything that you're doing here. And let's just, let's hear how you're doing. I know that your uh, sleep schedule and your whole schedule is just completely out of whack. Uh, like you were saying, you, you kind of slept in, but what what are you thinking what's going on i mean i'm a new nurse so coming into the field and like i'm on nights right now so i was going to be on nights regardless of the whole covid 19 stuff happening but it's definitely been very different with all of that it's been a lot of change schedules um i mean just working on nights is hard in general um, and then coming into work and um, kind of being flipped around a bunch. Um, we have a preceptor that you work with, and that's been changing a whole lot because certain preceptors have to work with, you know, the COVID patients. And then we kind of, it's a lot of just changing and being adaptive. Um, and I mean, coming home at you know, eight in the morning and trying to sleep during the day with dogs is not always easy. And then also um, my roommates are working from home as well. So that's two roommates. Um, so it's just been a lot of just change, which is good, but different. Yeah. So what, how are you doing personally? Uh, I haven't really got to talk to you and catch up. This is our first time that we've gotten to see each other since the social distancing. Yeah um and the shutdown but it's obviously fun for people to at least get to do these virtual uh sessions to to catch up but i are you sleeping all right are you obviously stressed like what is it what's the toll that it's really taking on you um you know mentally emotionally <laughs> what um i think that it affects everybody differently for me at first, I was like, oh, this is not really that big of a deal. And then, um, you know, a few weeks ago, it was really eye-opening and it got pretty stressful um, just because uh, my patients are really sick to begin with. And I don't want to do anything in my personal life or, you know, my work life that's going to hurt them or me possibly give it to them. Um, it has been definitely been a uh, a journey uh, I haven't really been able to go to the gym or do the usual things that I do so that's been really hard I've been um, I mean as far as sleep I haven't been sleeping as much so it was just a little bit of it's really hard in the beginning but I feel like I've gotten a little bit like more used to it it's been more normal I guess like I'm um, I'm used to just coming home now. I'm more of a homebody, hanging out with the dogs, um, you know, trying to figure out my routine now. But um, I mean, work is kind of my life at this point. So I check my schedule. I check my emails. There's emails every single day with things that are changing. Um, preceptors are changing. My schedule changes all the time. So I feel bad. I've been pretty disconnected from everybody. But I think like in the coming weeks, it'll be a little bit easier for me to navigate, you know, doing more normal things. So I feel like a lot of it was just me coming home and sleeping until I had to go to work again. Or and it's also different because I also have classes during the daytime as well. So I'm kind of days and nights um, for my classes because I'm in a um, critical care fellowship. So it's just been, it's definitely been a lot, but I've been trying to keep my anxiety and stress at bay. Yeah, I actually just did a a bar class online from my uh, my yoga studio this morning um, and I scheduled a couple of things for me because that helps me um, you know do that but you know I think a lot of people 
that, you know, us sitting around watching all the workers um, in the hospitals and doctor's office and, and the frontliners, um, you know, how scary is it for you being in, you know, so close to what we're, you know, we're obviously just seeing it on social media and, and, and TV and, um, you know, are you, are you scared? Are you, are you feeling comfortable and confident with the protection and everything that you're, you know, that you guys are doing? Um, I think that it's, it's weird because the guidelines change all the time. So at first it was a 95 mask and now it's like, all right, well, surgical mask, unless you're doing a procedure that's, you know, an aerosol procedure. And then it was, we couldn't get the patients we wanted tested. So it was really like, all right, well, everyone's just wearing surgical masks because this person hasn't been tested. We don't know if they're positive. Um, so it's kind of like, because at first it was like, okay, well, if you take care of a COVID patient, you won't take care of any regular patients. Like you'll just be a COVID patient because you were exposed. And then it was like, well, technically, how are we supposed to know that that person doesn't have it? So the next day we'd be taking care of a regular patient. And it's like, it's very stressful because we don't want to give anything to our other patients. And it's not just the patient that you're taking care of. Like, you have an assignment, but you're also helping everybody else. So people need turns. People need, you know, multiple nurses in the room for, you know, for help. Sometimes there's four nurses in a room helping turn a patient who, you know, is on a respirator and who has ECMO and who has all these different things. So it's not just like the person, you can't limit yourself that much. So it was, it's actually very stressful before we were able to get some of these patients tested um, because you don't want to give someone who had like a new heart transplant, possibly give them something. Um, so we were very cautious, I guess, around those patients more. We put a lot more precautions in place, but a lot of it is like, we have to go above sometimes what the guidelines are. And it's kind of unit by unit. Um, it's just, it's every day you come in and you have board, what we call board report and we hear what the plan is for that day and it's ever changing and then you have emails that come out that day before you're going to work so you're like okay well this is the email we got but then there's new stuff that comes out in the hour that we're driving into work so it's a little bit of craziness but um i think that i've heard that we have enough masks um in our unit but then i've also heard that they are taking the masks from our unit like because our unit isn't technically a COVID unit. We're trying to keep our unit um, COVID free because of the type of patients that we have. So a lot of the other units in the hospital have been moving their patients to our unit. We've been moving some patients to their unit so that the one unit can be a COVID unit. And then we are the non-COVID unit just because of the population of patients that we have are so high risk. Um, so our nurses have had to float up there. Their nurses have had to float down. It's just a lot of ever-changing things. And our management is doing a great job of, you know, keeping us informed and all that and trying to keep our, like, stress at bay. Um, right now they're taking volunteers to take care of the COVID patients. So um, me being a new nurse, I haven't had to be put in that situation yet because they want to keep me able to take care of patients in our unit um but it's just you don't know what's going to happen because in two weeks it could be i'm you know our whole unit is a covid unit so it's kind of just a lot of unknowns are happening but i think that they're trying to protect us as much as they possibly can so yeah it definitely sounds like um you know they that they're having the separation at least for the patients that, you know, have it or that, you know, that are um, very susceptible to getting it like in your unit. Um, but it, but hopefully that, you know, they are keeping you informed, like you said, every, every day, but we don't know what's going to happen. I think that's why a lot of us on the outside of not being in the healthcare field, we, you know, we only know what we see on social media and what we hear on the news and, you know, the reports every day or, um, you know, when the governor talks and, and secretary of health and, um, it's scary hearing all of those things. I'm, you know, and obviously I'm sure being <laughs> inside of the hospital and being so close to it, but, um, 
you know, I, we had talked about doing that mask drive that I had, I had started. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's something that a lot of, a lot of offices that don't have any masks at all. You know, I know you, you know, you helped me a lot with the compliance at the hospital and, you know, obviously certain things aren't going to be, um, to be good enough, like the, you know, fabric masks for certain departments, but, um, but I am doing that still for a lot of smaller offices and even veterinarians and, um, you know, office managers at, at places that are still open that, that could be a great help. So, um, you know, we don't know there's stuff that the supplies that you have now might not be, um, you know, not, might not be something, but, but obviously the, your safety is, is the most important thing that, um, you know, hopefully that, like you said, they're updating you every day, but so what, as far as, you know, what we are seeing, I know you're on social media, but um, you know, what are some of the things that millennials like can be doing, should be doing, uh, for, you know, things that you see firsthand experience from your perspective, what are some of the things that we should be doing out here, um, to help or suggestions that we could be doing better, um, you know, from your, your perspective? From my perspective, I'm seeing um, a lot of, so I'm seeing like both sides. So I see, you know, people who still want to go and have fun and do be social and do things like that. And that's great. But I also, and I, I get upset when I see stuff like that. So I'm like on Snapchat and I see, you know, people who are still like having parties. And for me, it, this is just going to continue to go on so much further because you might not be showing symptoms and that person that you're with might not be showing symptoms, but you know, you might give it to say your grandparents or somebody else who that is going to affect them. So I think it's a lot of, you know, it's not going to happen to me, but you can't think that way. You have to think like, I need to just like cut my social ties for a little bit. And it stinks because I miss my friends. I have literally just come home from the hospital, have hung out in my house. I don't even go to the grocery store. I like let other people do things like that because I just don't want to infect anybody else. So I mean, and I want to keep myself healthy as well. So for me, it's like you absolutely need a social distance. You can have Zoom happy hours. You can do so many cool things like socially, but staying away from people. Um, it's a difference if it's like, you know, if you're always with the same two people and that's who you're quarantining with, that's different, but just kind of continuing to have these people in and out, um, that's going to cause issues. And I think people need to listen more to the guidance on that. Um, so that's definitely something millennials can do to help. Um, also, um, just being like an advocate to keep your parents at home. I know a lot of like, for me, it's like, mom, you can't be going to the store every day. You know, my grandparents, you know, if you are like social distancing, there's a way to do it correctly. So I feel like, you know, it doesn't mean you can't absolutely leave your house, but like um, just being safe about it and conscious about it. Like, obviously I would rather go to the store and pick up something for my grandparents um, and take it to them and have them get it from outside their house. Now I haven't seen my grandparents at all because I don't want to give anything to them. But, you know, just trying to, you know, make sure that you're doing things right. But also, like, I've been seeing the whole, you know, virtual um, getting, what am I trying to say? <laughs> People who, like, dine out. So, you know, doing that, that's so great, like, supporting your community and doing things like that, as long as you're being safe about it, because obviously, you know, you need food. And, you know, you're trying to support people. So I think that's great as well, as long as you're, you know, not having a party mm -hmm. with it. So, so yeah, I think that's something millennials can do. Right. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I, I don't know. Just stay inside. Just hang out. Just Netflix and chill for a hot second. <laughs> yeah. Drink at home. Yeah, that's what a lot of the millennial uh, posts I've seen and they thought we were the spring breakers. I think we're doing a better job at staying in than a lot of the other generations honestly because 
yeah, like the spring breakers are not millennials. They're not. And they're, yeah. And honestly, I've seen more, and when I have been out, I've seen more older people out than my generation. Um, I feel like my generation is actually taking it really seriously because they understand the, they under, I feel like they're understanding like the consequences of what could happen. And we don't want our grandparents or anybody else that we're close to to affect, be affected by it. Yeah, and I think that a lot of our friends and, and more of our age group do have smaller children too. You know, I think that that's a factor, a huge factor with, with them is thinking, um, you know, keeping them safe and and just, you know, I, I'm doing the same thing with my parents and um, I have friends that we've talked about too that we're, you know, having to tell them, stay at home, stop going out. You can't go to your friend's house just to just... It's, it's funny, it's like the revol- re, uh, the the uh, roles have reversed with like teenage, yeah. <laughs> our teenage years, but. Yeah, this, it isn't like a hurricane party. It isn't like, a, you know, a snow day. It's not like that. And people are thinking of it like that, then they need to think of it differently. It's like, no, this isn't just like a fun time. We need to actually listen because that's how we're going to fix it it's not going to be fixed any other way. Yeah, I definitely agree. And I've, I've stayed home. I went to the grocery store once, but I think it's been a week and a couple of days since I've even um, gone anywhere, uh, let alone just, I've been walking around the neighborhood with, with George. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, so what are two other things that you miss the most before this, uh, you know, shutdown and the quarantine and also your crazy work schedule, um, what you're doing, um, which is great, but obviously you have to work, you know, crazy hours now. And so two things that you really, really miss the most. And then two of the things um, obviously could be the same, but things that you'll, you'll want to do right away, right when we can get back to friend time and so two of the things that I absolutely miss most are just texting my friends and being like, I'm going to stop by or like you, I want to come over and cuddle with Georgie or, Hey, I'm in the area. I miss you. I want to see you. Like I have not seen friends in so long that I absolutely, I'm such a social person. And I think for me, it's been like, I miss that so much. Um, Just kind of being able to, like have that time to spend with people and whether it's like at their houses or at a bar or wherever, or just, I don't know, just being social and seeing people. Um, And then the second thing I would say, I had just started getting into a gym routine, like just started. I had just gotten a gym membership because I had just started my job and had this really cool plan. Um, My knee was finally feeling better. And it was like two weeks of going to the gym and then I was like, my gym closed. So for me, I've missed that a whole lot. And just being able to like not think about, oh, am I going, is this the right thing to do? Like for me, I'm like, oh, I need to go to the grocery store, but I really should wait until I have like a lot more things. Or let me look on Amazon and see if they have it there instead. So I think just like always going through my head like I'm always thinking of, nope, I should really just stay inside. I really shouldn't do that. Like just, I want to live life normal again. Right. So just not having the, the, you know, having the ability to, to just do whatever you want yeah. and see who you want and all that and drink all the white claws with, Yay. with us at the bars. Um, it's, it's, it's and shambongs exactly um once we once we get together but yeah i think i think it'll change some of the perspectives of what we really appreciate um not that it yeah. was that not that it was anything taken advantage of um you know before but it's really going to make a lot of us appreciate so much more the things that we can't do the people that we can't see you know the um the 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 not spontaneous, but you know, like the things that we can do, you know, go out and just do that we can't right now. Um, I think that'll, it'll make, make us uh, appreciate that a lot more. I'm sure. Uh, like if I would have known the last night I was going out before all of this was going to be the last night, I would have, it would have been a lot different. 
Um, but I really am looking forward to like just being able to stop by my grandparents' house. Um, being able to stop by my sister's because I she has you know a year or like a one year old and I don't want to potentially give you know her or him anything I know she she works in the hospital too so she also has to deal with that so it just be like another exposure um you know I'm really looking forward to seeing friends again um traveling I miss traveling like I want to schedule my next trip um but I mean there's just so much I'm looking forward to be able to to do I think for me it's like I'm really excited to not have this feeling like I feel like if I would give my patients anything I would have such a feeling of guilt um that's a lot of what's holding me from like staying inside and everything like that so I'm really excited to not have that like looming feeling of oh I could be the person who brings it into my unit and then I'm giving it to you know nurses and patients and things like that I think that's something that people don't really talk about a whole lot is like the guilt that we potentially could feel and you know we are caring people and we want to help but um I don't know that stuff I've seen on social media a little bit like but not necessarily in this country but in other countries there's been a lot of guilt from like healthcare workers in the front line um so I don't want it to get like that over here oh yeah definitely I think that it shows obviously your selflessness in, in not wanting to, um, to spread it to, to even, you know, the people that, you know, like you said, your family and, and your patients, but I just wish that a lot of the other, other people out there were thinking like you, um, I know that your, your mind's in it more, you know, to your patients and into the hospital, but we need that thinking outside as well. Um, you know, for everybody else and in the general public, that are you know like you said like just staying home and and because they don't have to go anywhere um and you you know you do but um but yeah well what anything else as far as um you know things that you've seen that maybe are working or are not like you know sanitizing stuff when we get in like wearing gloves out or masks like what do you yeah so i think as far as the general public leave the mask and the gloves for healthcare workers. Um, we use them correctly. Um, they're not necessarily being used correctly in the general public. So you put gloves on when you leave your house, we are touching stuff in your house. You're taking it to the grocery store. You're touching the screens. You're touching everything with the same gloves. So you are then bringing it back in with the same gloves. If you would just not wear the gloves and wash your hands, in between everything or sanitize, you would actually be cutting it more. Um, and then as far as for the mask, if the general population is wearing them in a real, like when they're not high risk. So I'm not saying the people who are immunocompromised or anything like that, you continue to do what you need to do. But as far as for the general population who are, you know, going out to the grocery store and wearing, you know, N95 masks, it's not going to really help you. And you're taking that away from a hospital that needs it. And that, I mean, I'm not even wearing N95 masks right now. We're wearing surgical masks. So, I mean, those are being used with actual COVID patients. So I would not want that to run out because we have general population wearing it. I mean, I'm in a hospital all the time and I'm wearing a regular surgical mask. And half the time, we aren't even supposed to wear a surgical mask. We are with wear no mask. So unless the patient is showing symptoms or I have a heart transplant patient or another type patient, we don't wear masks. So for the people who are wearing them in the grocery store, it makes me laugh, but also it's like that's sad because we're use we're using these resources that we don't have a lot of. Um right now we aren't using cloth masks, but that's not to say that that would change. So I think as far as people who are, you know, willing to sew them or whatever, that is absolutely great. I think they continue to do it, give it to the people who are accepting them. Um, I just know my hospital, we're not yet. We are just following like certain CDC guidelines. Um, but that's not to say in a week that that's going to change. So um, I don't know, just wash your hands, sanitize your hands, stop wearing gloves out. I see people wearing gloves and I'm like, it's, you're causing more issues than you think you are. And I wish people would actually like understand that. Germs from your house are going to the grocery store, grocery store is going home and you're actually infecting yourself more, so. 
Yeah, definitely. Well, all right. Thank you for Melanie yelling with me about yeah, thank uh, you for having me. the, you know, what's going on from your side as a nurse and, and in the hospital. And um, hopefully, you know, we, we get this, you know, shortened. Um, I know that there's going to be probably a little spike surge they've been saying um, here that we haven't seen yet, but I think that if everybody could do the right thing and, and stay home, um, unless they're, you know, they're essential workers, it definitely will, will help, um, you know, not, not being in, in groups and yeah. having friends over and doing all those things like we talked about. And but also I want to add one more thing. Don't go to the hospital unless you absolutely have to. Do not go to the emergency department unless you are like in respiratory distress or having difficulty breathing because it's just clogging up stuff so much. So we want to help the people that we need to help. And then you end up just spreading stuff more. So as, so you're saying to if like, if it's really, really bad, obviously the rest were like, go to the emergency room. Yeah, but, absolutely. That would be help. But the people who might be having the symptoms, whether it's the fever, whether it's the, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the sore throat, you know, the things that we've heard about, they should be doing what, going you to the testing? Online. So there's a lot of places that are doing the online testing. So you get screened online and then you go and they'll like actually tell you where to go to get tested. And it's a, you know, most of the time it's a drive through testing so that you're limiting exposure to healthcare people and also um, to other people. So they all do the test in the car if you qualify to be tested. Um, and those are the people who I would say like don't have the heavy respiratory symptoms. So those are the people who like, you know, they're, they think they might have it. They should be tested. You should, I mean, you should know if you have it or not. I ex agree with that. Um, but that doesn't mean you do go to the emergency department. It's not an emergency at that point. So I think for me, I definitely, you know, keep the emergency department for the real emergencies and then follow the guidelines for um, getting tested otherwise, which, you know, you can get an appointment online. I know there's a lot of places that are doing free screenings and then you can go and get free testing, but not at the emergency department. Even if you walk into an emergency department setting, they're just gonna send you a tent anyways. So, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, definitely. We don't want to, you know, hold up the, the ERs because like you said, there's, there's regular uh, patients like you see, uh, you know, in your department all the time who need, mm -hmm. um, you know, who, who are in need of, of care. And, you know, there's times where I go to the emergency, you know, a department, I took my grandmother for shortness of breath and it, you know, it was packed. It was just, that's a, just a normal yeah. thing. So we have, we can't forget that there's, there's, Hopefully there's not as many accidents and injuries right now that people aren't yeah. doing anything. Um, but still we want to keep those open for, um, you know, like you said for that. So, uh, I had mentioned in the last podcast or two that we have our book here and I thought maybe you could help me out with some millennial slang. So okay. I'm going to open it up to a random page and we'll just see if it's something you've heard or maybe you say, and I'm just gonna pick something at random. All right, plug, hmm, I haven't heard of this. Definition, a plug is a shameless and blatant endorsement. Oh, I have heard this for a- Oh yeah, if I do plug something. For a product, person, or brand of a celebrity. Ah, yes, I do know this. I was, yeah. I was blanking on that, but um, all right. Do you have a shameless, blatant endorsement for a project or a plug that you wanna give? <laughs> White Claw, oh, White Claw. White Claw, I'm just kidding. Um, I'll plug you, you're doing some awesome things even though you are social distancing, you're doing the right thing, you're getting information out there, I'll give a nice plug to you. Thank you, all right. Well, yeah. thanks for Melanie yelling, stay safe. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing. And as soon as this is over, we will have a White Claw together. Has Please, I need a girls' night. Yes, <laughs> we will do it. Okay? Yes. All right. Well, thank you. Stay safe. You're welcome.